Have you ever had people tell you that they were sorry and you knew they didn't mean it? You knew that the bad or hurtful words and the unkind behavior would happen again? Do you know why? Because there wasn't true remorse. There wasn't true repentance. True repentance only happens when we make a complete 180 degree change in what we said or did that was hurtful or destructive. And this change must come from the heart. Hello, I'm Kathy Bartow. In an article which appeared on the Inc.com website titled Four Steps to Take When You Need to Say I'm Sorry, author Susan Steinbrecher gives a good plan for people who must give a public apology. These four steps include expressing remorse, taking responsibility for your actions, making amends, promising that it won't happen again. As Christians, we are to forgive others who sin against us, whether or not they apologize, and we are to heartfully repent of our sins and ask God for his forgiveness. Listen to Jesus as he tells the parable of the unmerciful servant found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy, seven times. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this time, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We must forgive from our hearts. Listen to what Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. As followers of Christ, God wants us to judge not condemn not, and forgive. Then we will not be judged, we will not be condemned, and we will be forgiven. There are many verses in the Bible that reinforce the importance of forgiveness. Listen to Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, a verse from the Lord's Prayer and verses 14 and 15. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And in Mark chapter 11, verse 25, And whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. We must remember that when we pray to first forgive others, then and only then will our Heavenly Father forgive us. Till next time.
Peace be with you.